What's going on everybody? I'm back with another video. This is the second video of the day and we got Liverpool versus Chelsea here. They ended up tying the game 1-1 one -one after Chelsea went down to 10 men just before half and that completely changed the game. And before we start, check out my book. It's online. It's on Amazon and there's links in the description below. Also be sure to check out Keyframe. That's how I made this video and that is also in the description. But let's get right into it. So Chelsea when they had 11 men, they pretty much looked to build from the back without using their goalkeeper or as you, using their goalkeeper as little as possible. They then went with a double pivot of Jorginho and Conte. Conte had a little bit more flexibility with going forward, where Jorginho primarily played in the central corridor, uh, maintaining the pivot position. Liverpool, they pressed a little differently in this match than they usually do. Their front three pressed press more vertically and more in, in to out whether where in the past we see them very much looking to get their wingers pressing the wide central defenders from a wide area and using their cover shadows to block the pass into wide areas but in this game they look to press just directly the players in the first line of build up using their cover shadow to block the central areas of Chelsea and forcing Chelsea to play through wide areas they had cover from their Central midfielders jumping to maintain access to the double pivot, covering the front three, allowing them to press more directly into Chelsea's first line. In the second half, when Chelsea went down to 10 men, they used their goalkeeper a little bit more to make up for this numerical disadvantage that they were under. They still went with their three central defenders, but now the area that changed was in the midfield. Jorginho became the lone central midfielder. Kovacic came into the game, played more as an eight, along with Mason now on the weak side. So he's much more of a midfield three with a single holding midfielder. And this made it easier for Liverpool to press. Because they only had the one holding midfielder, it made it much easier for Jota in the second half to use his cover shadow, block the pass, and allow them to press Chelsea directly. And it allowed them to use their advanced fullbacks to press into wide areas and be more brave in his pressing. Chelsea in the midfield third now, they maintain their three central defenders. Now we see a little bit of the variability from the two holding midfielders of Chelsea. Conte advances in the half space, playing a little bit further forward, and Liverpool's press looks to block these options in the center, as we mentioned, and they take on a vertical press from the driving from the center where the players look to jump out and press directly using their cover shadows to block holding midfielders rather than just the nine or Firmino dropping into these areas and covering himself. They then have the eights jump on and press when the first line of their press goes. Then the eights jump to then maintain access to these dangerous areas and hopefully force the ball wide where they can isolate the possession. For Liverpool, we also see much higher positioning in the defensive phase of their fullback. Here Andy Roberts, Robertson jumping to press Reese James in the wide area. So what this would do, it, was, it would create cover from his midfield, blocking the double pivot, but it would create a numerical disadvantage for Liverpool on the weak side. So the whole point of their press was to isolate possession so they couldn't switch the ball through their 3-2 build-up shape because if they were able to circulate possession to find the weak side, Liverpool would be at a numerical disadvantage. So by isolating their the Chelsea possession to one side, it allowed them to utilize their fullbacks in advanced areas. We see now Liverpool in the build-up and Chelsea take a little bit more of a Liverpool approach to their high block as we would normally associate from a Klopp team with Chelsea's nine dropping to block the single pivot or double pivot in this situation of Liverpool maintaining a deeper position and the wingers playing more narrow and higher up the field inverting their starting position to deter passes into the wide area or force them to play mid-range passes, allowing them to have more time to shift over into the wide areas. But the main thing from Liverpool is their initial positioning of their central midfielder. So Fabinho was always the holding midfielder, but a lot of times he was accompanied by Elliott alongside him, 
which would then allow Firmino to drop in, creating the midfield four. Or if Henderson dropped, Fabinho would shift over, and this would allow Firmino to drop into the left half space. Another movement from Liverpool in their initial buildup was their midfielders, their central midfielders dropping into wide positions. So on the left hand side, Andy Robertson would start higher up the field, allowing Mane to invert and Firmino to drop. And what this created was space in the wide area for a player like Jordan Henderson to drop into, gaining freedom from his pressing player N'Golo Conte, who was further up the field. So this created distance for Jordan Henderson to receive the ball and pick a forward pass out rather than in the central area where Conte would be closer and he would be more easily pressable. In the midfield third, we have Liverpool's offensive structure. And in the midfield, they look to create numerical superiority in the midfield three corridors around the two holding midfielders of Chelsea. But Chelsea countered this by playing very compact in their defensive setup. Their two holding midfielders in front three had very good spatial awareness on maintaining vertical and horizontal connections to one each other. So this would create multiple access points to the central players of Liverpool. And with the wing backs advancing on, they created access to either the central midfielders on, on their strong side, or they can even go press the fullbacks if the fullbacks advance and the wingers couldn't get there of Chelsea. But the weakness it did create, it did create a lot of space in behind, and the back three for Chelsea had a very tough job uncovering the full width and covering in behind without getting separated and breaking their connection. When Chelsea still had 11 players on the field, in the deeper area, they defended in a 5-4-1, and we'll see how drastic the change was for the Chelsea setup when they went down to 10 men. With 10 men, they went with a 5-3-1, similar to how Arsenal defended, except Chelsea did it, how it's supposed to look, how you'd expect a team in the Premier League with 10 men to defend, and with the right intensity to make up for their numerical disadvantage. But with Liverpool, they look to exploit the free man by playing with players in more central areas and vacating the width. So here, the first change is we have Alexander Arnold often coming into the right half space, putting him in a more central passing position. So in, by putting him in the half space, he can find more passes in behind from a deeper area or look to pull the midfielders of Chelsea out and allow to then penetrate in dangerous areas. We also saw Fabinho take up a higher role because of the low block defending of Chelsea in the second half. Fabinho advanced his position and allowed another central defender to jump and then having Van Dyke cover in behind or Matt Peep cover and Van Dyke jump. Robertson typically stayed in the wide area, tried to play in a more advanced role and get into more crossing positions which wasn't as effective because Chelsea maintained their five-man defensive setup, giving them good width all the way across the field. And with their three midfielders, these players look to maintain horizontal and vertical compactness at the edge of their own box to limit any space created between their lines and any available space that Liverpool could then exploit in these advanced positions. And so that's going to wrap up the analysis. I hope you guys enjoyed the game. I hope you guys enjoyed the analysis. And I'll see you in the next one.